In this video, we're going to go over how to do a amortization schedule for a real estate property. So the main thing you're going to need before you do this schedule, you're going to need the loan amount. You're going to need the loan period. So the length of the loan, and you're also going to need the interest rate of the loan. So in this example, I have calculated a monthly mortgage of $322.09. Okay, I am doing a $60,000 loan for a 30 year period and an interest rate of 5%. So this is a, uh, a fixed rate loan. So I want to find out what my amortization schedule looks like for a real estate property where I plan to sell in five years. So if you take a look at the month column, I want to basically find out how my principal is being paid down throughout the course of the year. So if I scroll all the way down to 60, I eventually get to year five. So my principal amount is the loan, but remember we have to calculate the interest that we're paying. So just because our monthly mortgage payment is $322, that doesn't mean that that's subtracting from the principal because we have to pay, we have to factor in the 5% interest rate from the loan. So what I'm going to do here is I want to basically input my principal amount and then I want to calculate my interest payment for that specific month. And the formula that I'm using is the principal amount times the annual interest rate divided by 12, right? Because we're doing monthly payments. And that gives me $250 for the, for the first month. Now, in order to figure out how much is being taken away from the principal, I'm basically going to subtract the monthly mortgage minus the interest payment. So the actual principal payment is $72.09. And to figure out what is the remaining balance of my loan, I'm simply going to subtract the principal payment amount from the principal. And that gives me the ending principle. Now I want to show you guys how to do this table on your own. Uh, basically what I can do here is I can scroll to the right and I'm basically going to copy the same table so that you can follow along. Right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create my my columns. I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this so you can follow along. And basically I'm just going to go ahead and transfer all this information to this new table. So again, I want to calculate month one. Then I want to go ahead and calculate my first principal amount. Now again, in order to find the interest payment, we need to multiply the principal amount times the interest rate divided by 12. And that should give me $250, as you see there. The next step is to find out what is the principal amount, the principal payment amount. So now we need to go ahead and grab our mortgage payment and subtract the interest payment amount. All right, this will give me the principal payment. And the ending principal is the principal amount minus the principal payment. And there you go, I have $59,927.91 left on my loan. Now, what I want to do with Excel is I eventually want to just kind of expedite this process for the, for the next month. Uh, let's say we're going to do I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag this number here so we get all of our months down to year five because again I plan to sell my property at year five and I want to go ahead and just center these 
Okay, so now for the next month, basically what I want to do, my, my starting principle for month two is going to be equals the last month ending principle, M3. And my ink is showing black, so let me change that to, there you go. Okay, so again, what I did there was the next month's principle is last month's ending principle. All right? And basically from here on out, I pretty much just want to copy and drag the formulas that are in the first row here. But I want to make sure that before I do that, all my values are correctly in place. And what I mean by that is, for example, this interest payment is being calculated from this table here on the left-hand side. So I want to make sure that if I click and drag, and I'll show you what I mean, if I click and drag, it's going to give me a zero. So in order to fix that, I basically want to lock in my values. So I'm going to go back to the interest payment and I want to lock C6. So I'm going to go ahead and place a dollar sign before the number six and that's going to lock down the row. Right, so if you want to lock the row, then you, you're going to go ahead and place a dollar sign in front of the number. If you want to lock the column, meaning going to the right, you're going to put a dollar sign in front of the letter. So now I want to go back to my interest payment. There's a dollar sign in front of the six, so I know this cell is going to be remain locked. Very good. And then I also want to do the same for the principal payments, which is being calculated from the monthly mortgage. So I'm going to go ahead and place a dollar sign in front of the eight as well. All right, and then I, will, I just want to double check my ending principle, making sure that I'm not using any values from this separate table here. All right, looks like I have everything in place. So now what I want to do, I just want to test it and I should get the same values as this cell here. 249, I'm gonna go ahead and change that to dollar amounts, and there you go. And then I'm gonna do the rest for principal payments and also ending principal. All right, once I have my second column in place, I can pretty much select all four cells, go to the bottom right corner, so you see the black arrow, I'm going to click and I'm going to drag all the way down to month 60. And there you have it. That's how you do an amortization schedule for a loan on a mortgage. Thanks for watching.